The Wizards, Pistons, Spurs, Hornets, and Trailblazers own the NBA's five worst records in net ratings. They are responsible for this season's six longest losing streaks headlined, of course, by the 28-game nosedive that earned Detroit a share of the most ignominious entry in the NBA's all-time record books. But even bad teams playing out the string feature some things worth keeping an eye on. Let's consider a few of them, starting with some positive development in D.C. Washington Wizards' Denis Abdija doing stuff? It's not easy to locate stuff to get psyched about in a season that opened with 17 losses in the first 20 games and featured the Wiz being the first team officially eliminated from postseason contention. You have to dig through an awful lot of viral Jordan Poole clips to find it, but if you're hunting for silver linings beyond Tyus Jones' assist to turnover ratio still stellar and Corey Kispert's assist rate rising, Abdi just play over the second half of the season qualifies. Detroit Pistons' Cade Cunningham shining through. What I will say, though, if you haven't caught Cunningham much over the past couple of months, you've been missing out because all that hype coming out of Oklahoma State? Turns out maybe it was warranted Cunningham's stepped-up self-creation and shot-making haven't come at the expense of looking to get his teammates involved. Since mid-December, he ranks 10th in the NBA in both points created per game via assist and potential assists per game. Charlotte Hornets' Brandon Miller working anywhere. For all the uproar that attended Miller saying before the 2023 NBA draft that Paul George was his GOAT, and for all the jokes that followed, all things considered, pretty good for a young player to place an extremely high value on being able to 1. Do virtually everything on a basketball court at a high level. 2. Do it all in a way that allows you to fit in any kind of system or scheme and 3. Do it to a degree that can make pretty much any kind of team better. Portland Trail Blazers' DeAndre Ayton, reminding. After his rocky end to his tenure in the Valley, Ayton got off to a rocky start in the Pacific Northwest, averaging a whisper-quiet 13.1 points per game on underwhelming efficiency during a first few months. But after missing 15 games with an extended bout of right knee soreness, well, most of them were about the knee. Anyway, Ayton's gotten ramped back up again, averaging better than 20 points and 12 rebounds per game on 63% shooting. San Antonio Spurs take a friggin' guess. After having made the separate in my view defensible but wildly controversial decision to open the season by test-driving Jeremy Sochin as a starting point guard, Pop chose to shift gears and move Trey Jones, an actual point guard, into the starting lineup. Since those changes, Wembenyama has averaged 22.3 points per game with 10.6 rebounds, 4 assists, 3.8 blocks, and 1.3 steals. Teams this bad rarely have this many avenues to improve and this much evidence that they're already on to something. Then again, teams this bad rarely have a Victor Wembenyama. They haven't made very many of those, not on this planet anyway.